So, so in the spirit of uh, the football cup that we had in uh, Russia, um, Alcides is the French variation of uh, Alcides, and Alcides is the least known name of Hercules. And Hercules, when he passed away, became the gatekeeper of the Olympus. Everything that happens in cloud, companies that are building cloud services, this is where they deliver their magic, and this is where we come in. So, as we all know, not all workloads um, are born equally. And workloads, it calls for a definition, are the vehicle for running the microservices and the application and the business logic. And we used for many years EC2, and we are going to use that for many more years. We are now using Lambda. EKS has joined the family in this birthday for Kubernetes. And at the end of the day, the operational evolution of the entire infrastructure that we are dealing with requires different approach, an approach that helps operation teams and security teams to actually digest all the moving parts that are coming together. So I did this morning kind of a comparison of the different concepts in the different kind of technology stacks and how they kind of interlace together. So you can see that in Kubernetes, pods are the equivalent of EC2 instances and Lambda functions are basically the workloads and the concept of replication controllers, daemon sets repeats itself in, in, in many ways, the history repeats itself in the sense that auto-scaling group is our application controllers. And Lambda replication that come natively as part of AWS Lambda is just like ECS replica and daemon set. And services, those are the load balancers, the API gateways, and they come in different manifestation altogether. The way that we define microservice is the combination of your service, your load balancer, your ingress, and the backing workload that basically deliver the magic that you build. So without further ado, I would switch to a demo. And let us not forget that today, our app is not really our app. We are using third-party services, and they're all kind of mixed together in the environment that we see. So Alcid is about deep visibility, surfacing the beautiful, the beautiful interaction between the microservices, behavioral anomaly threat protection, threat intelligence that basically brings in threat intelligence cloud all the way down to the different workloads, whether they are EC2 instances, VMs, pods, and Lambda functions, and then making that working together with the application aware policy, which is what developers and DevOps are wishing to have. So to kind of highlight the concept of load balancers and uh, the backing VMs that are basically moving all the needles. So here we can see um, a filtered view of one of the regions in, in, our, in our demo account that basically shows um, an application uh, auto-scaling group that is front-ended by load balancer with two backing VMs. If I take this very same notion, we can see Lambda functions in the same view it basically front-ended by API gateway. And if I go into a Kubernetes cluster, so you can see here that you have a God view or a view from the Olympus, if you will, of your entire infrastructure. Two different zones, US, uh, East, uh, US East 1 and US uh, East 2, basically, in one place that basically shows you kind of the entire overlay infrastructure. So if I zoom in on one of our EKS cluster, so you can see how the different workloads are being scheduled on the different nodes that are running in that cluster. Um, to show you kind of the inner beauty of uh, EKS, you can see here how our security agents are basically inventory the different workloads and how they spin up. So anyone here knows what ENI is? All right, so ENI is basically all the wiring that EKS folks did for the Kubernetes networking, which basically made Kubernetes a native citizen on AWS. So going back to the uh, beauty of, of this system. So what we basically see here as an example is um, daemon set deployed on three different nodes and I can zoom in and basically see what is going on in the infrastructure. So it doesn't really matter if you onboard a new Kubernetes application and use multiple of them, you can still control everything from one place and still stay in control. Let's talk security groups. So for security groups, this is what we've used for many years to secure our um, EC2 instances. You can see that in one place, 
I can basically show you which are the members of that security group, and even to show that who are the VMs that are interacting with the same uh, VMs. Taking that same notion back into Kubernetes and EKS, we can see that uh, Kubernetes introduced the notion of, let me find that back. And here we go. So Kubernetes basically introduced network policies. And we all love the command line to basically um, configure and automate policies. But then again, once we have that up and running to actually understand what is actually going on, it's really difficult to see it uh, from one place. And here you can see a visualization of who are the members, the pods that are basically um, enforcing this specific policy right now. And spin that across multiple clusters, and you have kind of a single pane of glass, a view for the Olympus again of your entire infrastructure, both security groups and network policies for Kubernetes. So kind of taking the, the dark side or kind of uh, what is happening in runtime in your environment. So this view basically captures the service discovery in one of the clusters that we just saw. So you can see the different workloads, how they basically query uh, KubeDNS, which is the internal service discovery in Kubernetes. And you can see clearly that this is part of the entire operation. So this is the runtime view of your entire infrastructure. The, th the, the, the left side and the right hand side are the third party services that we basically see here. So on the right hand side, you can see that the event feed, the security event feed is kind of the, uh, think about it as your Facebook security event or your Instagram security event of everything that is happening in your environment. With one click, I can basically triage, and let's find an interesting crypto mining event, and you can see that the behavioral anomaly detection and the threat intelligence cloud that basically feed the entire infrastructure and the agents basically detected that there is a crypto mining happening in the environment. So let's switch to the runtime view and search through the entire assets and see where this crypto mining is going. So this was the first day of development of that crypto mining. It didn't crypto mine at all. It went to different cloud services, third party services. But once we activated that crypto mining, you can see in that very same view, the ability to see how there is an interaction with the mining pool. And basically, mining pool is not, is not stealing your data on one hand, but on the other hand, it's abusing your resources in a way that we didn't intend that to happen. So what we bring into the mix is the ability to define application-aware policies that basically says we only want to allow our workload to connect the API, Twitter API, for that matter, and nothing else beyond that. So think about it as developer-friendly way to define policies rather than defining labels and tags in the same place. So that specific workload, after defining this policy and enforcing that in runtime, leveraging Amazon Linux 2 and the eBPF subsystem within that uh, operating system, basically shows that that same workload, redeployed, only access the intention, the developer intention, in one place. So it can only access Twitter API. It can access KubeDNS for service discovery. And we have a happy port scanner here in the system that is trying to basically map the entire uh, operations within the EKS cluster. And you can see all that in one place. Our machine learning algorithms are actually coloring that workload with a color that basically says something is off, something is scanning your network on one hand, but then the well-defined policy, a developer-friendly policy onboarded during the application deployment to EKS, we can basically shut down anything but what we intended to do for that workload. It's completely different than network-based policies. It's an application-aware concept that brings together developers DevOps and security teams into the same page in a language that kind of easy for developers to digest. So I think that wraps up the time that I had. So 
With that in mind, I'm going to the other side. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So I was wondering, you know, we talk a lot uh, about whatever as code. Um, what's it like to manage security as code? And how do you find uh, developers, you know, are they really grabbing hold of security and man starting to think about it and manage it, you know, as they're writing their application? So the short answer is we have to have developers taking part of the kind of whole security posture of uh, applications, whether they are deployed on Kubernetes and EKS and whether they are deployed using serverless functions. Uh, I wouldn't expect the developers to have a deep understanding and know-how beyond their application know-how. So if I'm as a developer needs to access um, Slack APIs for that matter, it's all I need to kind of bring that know-how into the application and, and kind of embed that into the deployment at deployment time and have security agents that are actually enforcing that policy. Um, it wouldn't be uh, suffice to say that only developers would be the ones that dictate policies. You have security teams, you have operation teams that are responsible for infrastructure pieces like databases. And this is where we have multiple authors contributing to the overall security policy. So it's quite different. And I hope that you guys like it and ask for a demo. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs>